Born in Omaha, Nebraska, in 1967, Chris Ware started doing comic strips when he was studying at the University of Texas in Austin, where he was invited by fellow cartoonist Art Spiegelman to contribute to Anthology Magazine Raw. A regular contributor of covers and cartoons to The New Yorker, since 1993 Ware has also been publishing the Acme Novelty Library comic book series, which included a serialization of Jimmy Corrigan, the smartest kid on earth. In 2000 he turned the strip into an acclaimed graphic novel, which won the 2001 Guardian First Book Award. In 2012 Ware published the box set Building Stories, a project a decade in the making consisting of 14 different books and booklets. His latest book, Monograph for Zoli, 45 Pounds, is out now, One Music Sleep by Max Richter Personal and Meaningful Max Richter Performing Sleep in Berlin. Photograph Stefan Hoderath Redferns Though Richter claims he wants us to listen to his Ithor work while asleep, I've been listening to its melting chords for the past year while very much awake, and it's the only music I know that may capture the sensation of death that ultimate, freeing apathy towards all things worldly, personal and meaningful, making it among the most personal and meaningful pieces I've ever heard. I would love to see it performed live before I die. Photograph David Plunkert The New Yorker 2 Drawing David Plunkert's New Yorker covers the newest artist to grace the only periodical remaining that still allows a drawing to be a drawing. David Plunkert's covers are the best of the year so far, from his personalized bullets in the wake of Las Vegas to his genius perpetual motion machine take on Charlottesville. Plunkert's images start their engines and run smoothly, propelling one into a mental landscape that gets more tangled and complex the longer one looks. If he keeps this up, he'll be our new Saul Steinberg, three-film downsizing director-writer Alexander Payne and co-writer Jim Taylor, 2017 Watch a trailer for Downsizing. Election, about Schmidt and Sideways are three of my favorite films, and Alexander Payne and Jim Taylor are reunited in a strafing satire on American excess, gluttony and class as told through the simple science fictional tweak of shrinking oneself so drastically that worldly wealth becomes relatively so much more. The trailer features Matt Damon and gags as genius as giant wedding rings being moved into miniature McMansions and the signing of legal documents the size of tennis courts. That the film opens at Christmas and the trailer was released on the 11th of September proves these great, accessible and unpretentious filmmakers aren't missing even the tiniest detail of our hugely failing American experiment. Nav 4 graphic novel Sabrina by Nick Tornasso My own profession currently seems divided between comics fiction and comics memoir, the former more or less growing out of the childish fantasies now grotesquely metastasis as superhero stories for adults, which makes about as much sense to me as writing pornography for children. Some middle-aged colleagues and I believe literary comics fiction is possible without resorting to fantastical heroics, however, and the youngest and finest exemplar, 28-year-old Nick Renasso, offers a new book next year to possibly top us all Sabrina, about a missing woman, a video and the unspeakable possibilities of our contemporary mitigated reality. After I recommended his first, Beverly, to Zadie Smith, she wrote back a one-word review wow, and she's just called Sabrina the best book, in any medium, I have read about our current moment. I have no doubt that if Nick keeps it up, he will do things on paper that no other human has yet imagined he basically already is, and that's the best kind of heroism imaginable. Photograph Fantagraphics 5 Graphic Memoir What's a Paintoonist by Jerry Moriarty Following the incandescent example of Art Spiegelman's mouse, the graphic memoir is easily the most visibly mature category of comics, from Marjane Satrapis Persepolis to Alison Bechtel's Fun Home to Roz Chast's Can't We Talk About Something More Pleasant, all books that dignify the genre with sophisticated human stories of, well, real life. What's a Paintoonist by 79-year-old Jerry Moriarty reinvents the memoir as an ineffable, shimmering picture poem of earth-shedding memory, discarding the black brush strokes of his groundbreaking Jack survives for a luminous rainbow of tentative pencil and brush attempts at putting his affairs in order through the mnemonics of his childhood home and family. That he recently purchased and moved back into the same house makes the reading of this book all the more heart-opening and life-affirming, to say nothing of profoundly moving. I cried. 6 Exhibition Carrie James Marshall Mastery Carrie James Marshall, Untitled Club Couple, 2014 Connecting to the Tendons of the Deepest Recesses of American Identity Photograph MCA Chicago Though the exhibition has ended, the catalog for Chicago painter Carrie James Marshall's tour of African American life and consciousness is still gettable, and it should be got. Walking through the exhibit with the crowds during its closing week, my experience as a white viewer versus African-American viewers must have been as opposing as Marshall's approach to portraiture is to its history, Western art's glowing skin inverted as a pool of empathetic darkness into which the viewer falls. 
Connecting to the tendons of the deepest recesses of American identity, Marshall's beautiful paintings are a humblingly generous artistic gesture, especially now. And that he's been working on a lengthy comic strip, Rhythm Master, since 2000 is a fact not lost on this cartoonist. 7. Television Full Steam Ahead Full Steam Ahead L.R. Peter Ginn, Alex Langlands, Ruth Goodman, Mind Sharpening and Life Affirming. Photograph Charlotte Lieb Clean TV I am proud to say my family's favorite television programs are the BBC's farm historical docudrama series, my daughter Clara naming presenter Ruth Goodman one of her favorite people on planet Earth. From 2005's Tales from the Green Valley, set in the 1620s, to its newest, Full Steam Ahead, an examination of the effect of rail travel on the economy, industry and, most importantly, British daily life, I've had every DVD and book air mailed to our house, watching the boys and Ruth try to live under historical, technological and agricultural limits with an infectious affection for their experiment and each other that is mind-sharpening and life-affirming. The hosts are unpatronizingly civil and ultimately get at that most Tolstoyan events namely, what does it feel like, and mean, simply to be alive photographed round quarterly.